this is rocket fuel. And I don't know that I should have it, but I do. And if you don't tell anybody, I'll show you what it is. Here. I guess I should explain. Okay. So yes, this stuff as it is, is obviously not rocket fuel, but I don't know. You ask younger me, I've made plenty of rockets out of this stuff. It's instead the plastic that this is made out of that USU researchers are using to turn into rocket fuel. This right here is a solid fuel cell. These are made of ABS plastic, which is the same material that Legos are made out of. If you were to mash up Legos and, and make a mixture of it, you'd, you could probably get some similar results. Huh, I think I might have missed something in the recipe. But uh, for the researchers, they have an easier way to do it than this at least. They 3D print their motors. We love to 3D print it because ABS is that thermoplastic. Since we're 3D printing it, we also have really good access to be able to experiment with these specific fuel grains. That could mean varying the port geometries, or you can vary the port in order to get desired properties. And what is that desired effect, you might ask? Well, something like this. Now, to do this, you're gonna need one other ingredient from the recipe, and that is a propellant, which in this case is laughing gas, or in some cases, gaseous oxygen, depends on what they're testing. But either way, it's something to get you from five, four, three, two, one. Boosters in ignition, and liftoff of Artemis One. We ride. <laughs> so yeah, it's rockets made out of laughing gas. And Legos. Yep, laughing gas and Legos. That's what our rocket is made from. It, in the simplest concept, it really is made from laughing gas and Legos. That is our baseline that seems to be our, what we call highest TRL, technology readiness level. It's the one that I think will be the first real in space application. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, cool. We're making rockets out of Legos and laughing gas. Great, what for? Well, for NASA. Specifically, the Artemis missions. You know, the ones going to the moon again, and then Mars. That's pretty cool. But specifically, NASA wants them to test to see what the lunar lander will do when it lands on the moon. One of the biggest problems that happens is when you land on the surface of the moon, and the plume from the rocket lander, basically the fire coming out of the bottom of the rocket, impinges on that lunar surface. It's going to kick that dust up, and, and it goes everywhere. That problem is not really well understood, and the last of the major studies done on this were back in the 1960s. Both the Science Mission Directorate at NASA and the Human Spaceflight Directorate have developed a bunch of models for how this regolith behaves to try and uh, use this for, for mission design, but there's no really good data source to actually verify it. See, basically, Utah State has developed a rocket motor that is kicking out the same amount of flame in the exact same way as the lunar lander will. And so NASA is going to use it in a vacuum chamber full of lunar dust to see what's going to happen. In this vacuum sphere, they have a bunch of cameras and sensors that can detect and track all the particles as they're getting thrown all over the place. And it's been very important work so that our astronauts that are going to the moon for Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 and beyond can land safely on the moon and we have high confidence that it will be a safe adventure. So why did NASA choose Utah State to do this? Well, A, because we're already really pretty connected to NASA. But... And the other is that we simply had a superior technology. Some of the things that we've done with our arc ignition system, our green propellant, the 3D printing, we were pretty much ahead of the world. We're, we're doing things here with hybrid rockets that no one else in the world can do right now. And it's, it's, it's kind of interesting when you go to these major conferences and uh, you cannot believe the number of times I've had to correct people and say, no, we are not the University of Utah. We're the one further north. We're, we wear blue and not red, so. So yeah, it's not the rocket that is taking the astronauts into space and it's not the one that is landing them on the moon, but we're still playing a pretty big role in preparing humanity to go back to the moon and land on the moon and get back safely. Uh, yeah, so I pretty much tell everyone I know that <laughs> the work that I do here and people are always amazed. It's cool that stuff that we're working on is actually making a difference. Three, two, one. And has big implications in space flight and future space missions.